He was 170 days dying and not yet dead. He fought for survival with the passion of a beast in a trap. He was delirious and rotting, but occasionally his primitive mind emerged from the burning nightmare of survival into something resembling sanity. Then he lifted his mute face to eternity and muttered, What's the matter, me? Help, you goddamn gods. Help is all. Blasphemy came easily to him. It was half his speech all his life. He had been raised in the gutter school of the 25th century and spoke nothing but the gutter tongue. Of all brutes in the world, he was among the least valuable alive and most likely to survive. So he struggled and prayed in blasphemy, but occasionally his rabbling mind leaped backward 30 years to the childhood he remembered a nursery jingle. Goli Foil is my name, and Terra is my nation. Deep space is my dwelling place, and death's my destination. That is the opening to The Stars My Destination, a science fiction book written in 1956 that many people consider to be the greatest work of science fiction ever written. Um, even Samuel R. Delaney believes that. I happen to believe that his work, Dahlgren, is the greatest work of science fiction. But Alfred Bester is was an absolute genius. Nothing touched his work. Um, this, written in 1956, would lay the groundwork for what would eventually be known as cyberpunk. Nearly 30 years before the first works of cyberpunk emerged, Alfred Bester was writing about those same themes and ideas. And this book is all about a character who is trying to escape from a desolate spaceship and then get revenge on the people who uh, imprisoned him. Very much like the Count of Monte Cristo. Similar to what we're gonna be looking at today, Escape the Dark Sector, where we are taking characters and we have to escape from a hellish space station that is trying to keep us imprisoned and kill us. One thing I do recommend that you do with this game is download an app called Soundscaper, which you can hear right now in the background. This is an app that you can generate like sci-fi background sounds with. It's pretty complex if you want to get into all the different modules, and if you don't have an understanding of modular synthesizers, it could be a little overwhelming, but if you just use a couple of the presets that it comes with and you just hit play, you can generate all kinds of neat science fiction sounds that add a lot of theme to this game. I'm gonna turn that down now. One thing this game is not lacking on is theme. Everything in this game is theme forward. And that's probably why the company who makes this is called Theme Born. And this is a spiritual follow-up to Escape the Dark Sector, or Escape the Dark Castle, excuse me. And I kind of think of this as Escape the Dark Castle Advanced. It adds just a few wrinkles to the formula that make it more of a gamer's game. Whereas I view Escape the Dark Castle in one of my top 10 games, view it more as a party game, and that's the way I like to play it with other friends at the end of a night after we've all been drinking or in between other games. It's a super fun time to have with other people. It always erupts into like some kind of stand-up die roll or people cheering, uh, things getting knocked over. It's just, it's a great, great game for that kind of environment. Escape the Dark Sector, on the other hand, I think because of the added mechanisms, it becomes a little more complex, not a lot, but just by adding a little bit, it kind of elevates the game in terms of complexity. And now for me, Escape the Dark Sector is kind of like the perfect solo game. I don't like playing Dark Castle solo because I enjoy it more with the group. This, I truly believe that I will enjoy playing this more solo. Of course, I haven't been able to play this with the group yet because of all the COVID nonsense, but that is besides the point. So what are you doing in this game? You are taking a number of characters. When you play solo, you're gonna have two. And each one of the characters is gonna have a certain number of stats where you're gonna have might, uh, cunning and wisdom and those stats are going to be represented on each of the characters has their own d6 with those stats represented each character is going to take a cybernetic implant that's going to help them on their adventure and you're going to take a medical record and you're going to keep track of your hit points and it's going to look kind of like a heart rate monitor towards the end this is really cool again everything in this game is theme forward 
And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be working your way through a number of random encounters. Starting with your uh, your opening card, which of there are three, you're going to pick one at random. And then from a stack of chapter cards, which of course there are a lot in the game. This is the base game only. There, I don't believe there have been any expansions out yet. But you're going to take 12 cards and a boss, of which there are five, and you're going to pick that at random as well. What's interesting about Dark Sector is that the chapter cards have a little bit more of a progression from easy to middle to uh, difficult. Easy, medium, difficult. And from level one, which is the easiest, you're going to pick four at random. And you're going to give those a shuffle. And then under those, you're going to put four level two cards. And then from under those, you're going to put four level three cards. And so that's going to become all of your chapter cards that you have to get through from level one to level three. So you have a little bit more of a progression as you go through them, unlike Dark uh, Castle, which kind of mixes all of them in together without any regard to difficulty. And you're going to take your boss, put that on the bottom, and you're going to take your starting card and put that on the top. And you're going to flip this over and you're going to look at the amazing black and white bold art which is all over this entire thing i would like to thank themeborn for sending me the retail copy to review along with the uh, play map which is actually pretty nice but this is overriding the security protocol of the holding cells was no easy task but now real danger lurks at every turn you dart from your cell to the control room opposite. There, a map of the station flickers on a faulty monitor. You frantically search for the location of your ship. Remove an Act 3 chapter card from the mission deck without looking at it. All right, so this makes it a little bit easier. So because we found that map, we can actually remove one of these so we don't have to go through it. All right, let's remove that one. Nice. I had one the other day that had me add a chapter, which makes things more difficult. The map vanishes, replaced by an urgent transmission addressing all members of security. They have orders to eliminate you. You each grab a sidearm from the rack before setting off at speed. Draw one starting weapon for each member of the crew, then turn the first chapter card. All right, so we are off on our adventure. We have a number of different starting um, weapons basically two different types of uh, pistols. We have a slug pistol, which uses ballistic ammo, and a ray gun, which uses um, energy ammo. So we're gonna take those. It comes with one ammo, and this is one of the additional mechanisms, is you take an ammo uh, die there. And then it has a rate of fire, which means that I can shoot one ammo per ranged combat turn. The ray gun uses energy, so we'll take an energy D6 and we will add that there. And then you just go through like Escape the Dark Castle. One by one, you flip over the chapter cards and you have to overcome the challenge. Desperate to evade detection, you crawl into a foul-smelling ventilation duct. Within, a deep rhythmic throbbing sound is punctuated by the metallic scuttling of unseen creatures. Nominate one member of the crew to navigate this narrow branching crawl space. They must roll two wisdom in three attempts. After each roll, all other crew members of the crew lose one HP from claustrophobia, unless the total has been reached. If the total has not been reached after three attempts, the correct route is found by chance, and you all emerge exhausted and shaken, forever haunted by, his, by this narrowing experience, harrowing experience, and narrowing corridors. All right, so we need to roll Wisdom, and Wisdom is the little star. So who's better at Wisdom? It looks like Lieutenant Tanner is better at Wisdom. So we would take Lieutenant Tanner's character uh, dice there, and we would need to roll two Wisdom in three attempts. All right, so there's two Might, so that is not it. So then what, each character would take a point of damage. And there we go, two wisdom in three attempts. We got two wisdom in two attempts, so we escape the air duct system with only taking minimal damage. So 
then we would go on to the next card. And the next card is a combat encounter. Out of the darkness, a frantic prisoner. So one thing you have to do is, um, which I forgot to mention, is before you draw a card, you have to nominate one of your characters or players to be the you, to be the focus of the card. So uh, let's say we nominated Lieutenant Tanner because she uh, got out of the ducks first. So she comes out of the ducks, kicks down this grate there, comes into this next room, and then all of a sudden, out of the darkness, a frantic prisoner sprints towards you, narrowly evading a barrage of crackling laser fire from behind him. You lose one HP, so Lieutenant Tanner would lose an HP. As a shot meant for him strikes you, as a group, you must choose one option. You can let him through. The salty old captain is grateful and hastily rewards you before vanishing into the dark. Draw an item card. Or we can attack. It's payback time. Begin combat. So we can let him through. In that case, we could draw an item card from the item deck, of which there are quite a few. And I love the backing on these item cards. I love how they incorporated the different iconography for the different stats into this circuit board. Super cool, just so totally thematic. And there are all kinds of different items. You can have these two-handed weapons, which is placed like that. So each character can hold up to four items or four spots worth of items. If you have a two-handed weapon, you turn it, you turn it landscape mode like that. So then they can only hold three. And every time you draw a weapon, you take its ammo from the uh, pool of ammo dice. And then of course there are med packs and like stem packs and grenades and all kinds of different things that you can find to help you on your journey. Nothing bad is in here. There aren't any like curses or anything like in some of the expansions in Dark Castle. Okay, so we could let him go and draw an item or we could fight him. In which case, when you fight something in this game, you have to set up a number of chapter dice and those become the strength of the encounter. In this case, to overcome this encounter, we have to beat two might, we have to beat one cunning, and then this symbol tells you to roll a chapter die for each um, hero in your party. And so two more cunning. So to overcome this challenge, we need to beat that um, layout of dice. And then at the top of each combat um, encounter, you can choose to do range combat. If you have a weapon with ammunition, you can take that ammo. You can take a hit die. So this is like the enemies fighting back at you. And you would roll those together. You would consult the chart to see uh, ballistic damage. In this case, to this guy would do two damage. And this is him firing back at you. So this would be a miss, this would be a hit, and if he hits you, then you take that amount of damage. But every time you damage in ranged combat, you get to remove uh, however much damage you do in dice. So I would remove those two, and so on. You can take ranged combat encounter, or ranged combat uh, rounds, as long as your heroes have a ranged weapon with ammunition. As soon as you run out of ammunition or as soon as you decide you want to go into close combat, then you start using your character's um, character D6 and then you are in close range combat for the rest of the game, in which case you are just trying to roll and match those symbols. Every time you match one, you can remove a chapter die. Every time you don't match one and he has um, chapter dice left on the board, your characters take a certain amount of damage. Another thing that is a new addition to this game is you can flank. So you can take your character die and you can put that on the flank card and that represents you kind of like moving around to the enemy's flank and then you get an additional kind of free round of combat to do. But so they're just a little bit, as you can see, just a little bit more a little bit more on the tactical side. It's still very simple, but it adds a few elements, a few more decisions that you have to make. And so in that sense, it does feel more like a gamer's game to me. Eventually, you know, you're gonna be working your way through the rest of the chapter one cards there. And then you're gonna get down into the act two I just love the art in this game. It's so good. 
so grimy. And then after chapter or act two, you're going to be into act three. And remember, we only have three in this scenario because we found a map at the beginning that would help us get through. And then you would finally uh, face off against the boss. And that's pretty much it. Just working through cards, working through random encounters, combat and non-combat, finding the boss, trying to kill the boss, and trying to escape the dark sector. So like I said, there are a huge number of cards. You could play this game many, many, multiple times without ever running into the same combination of cards. And since you know you can shuffle them between every game, so I mean, there could, you could play this game for probably like months on end and never see the same cards show up in the, in the same adventure. Um, and I'm sure they're gonna be adding more expansions just like they did with Dark Castle. So I'm really looking forward to what is coming next for Dark Sector. We have, uh, like I said, there are three starting cards. So we saw one there, and then there are two more that you can choose from there, or choose at randomly. There are a total of six different characters. So there's the other uh, four different characters. And then we have the uh, bosses here. So yeah, all good stuff. Um, if you liked Dark Castle, there is no, I see no reason why you wouldn't absolutely love Dark Sector. If you're looking for a fantastic sci, like dark sci-fi, grimy sci-fi solo game, uh, this is definitely the game for you. One of the best things about it is just how easy it is to get out, set up, play, and put away. I can go from it being completely boxed up to set up and ready to play in about four minutes. And for a game with this much theme, and this much excitement being able to set it up in four minutes and probably takes like five minutes to put away and then if you stack it right and put it away in an organized manner then your next setup is going to be even easier just a fantastic game all around i am glad to own both of these i don't think this replaces dark castle it just kind of supplements it it's 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 another game in that system but one that's a little more complex. So I am happy to keep both of these games in my collection. And they come in these, these great small boxes that don't take up a ton of shelf space. So huge game, small box, tons of theme, tons of great art, tons of narrative, and just tons of fun. And that is Escape the Dark Sector, a total hit. Um, so all right guys, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. And remember to take a look at The Stars My Destination by Alfred Bester if you have not yet read it. And if you're looking for a little more theme in your theme-born game, take a look at the um, Soundscaper app to add some weird sci-fi sounds to your game. So all right guys, we'll take it easy. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.